Hello, everyone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If we can have your attention, please. Thank you. There are some additional seats up in front if people want to come and sit down instead of stand. No? We're very nice. We are. <laughs> okay. Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to get started because we are going to end at noon, so we want to um, get the, um, the workshop underway. I know people are still walking in, but we're going to go ahead and start. So again, good morning. On behalf of the Department of Justice, Division of Law Enforcement, Bureau of Gambling Control, I'd like to welcome you all to this regulation workshop to discuss the issue of rotation of the player-dealer position. So this is the second of seven workshops that we will be holding in various cities throughout uh, the state. We chose the locations to try and make it convenient and accessible for everyone who wants to participate and provide input on this issue. So the Bureau looks forward to hearing everyone's thoughts today. And we understand that individuals may feel strongly about this issue, but please know that today's workshop will be conducted in a civil collegial manner. Uh, but I believe that we can have opposing views and opinions from one another, but it's also possible to have civil, constructive, and professional discussions. Um, I ask that we keep this in mind throughout these discussions. We can't tolerate any um, discussions that are um, discourteous to one another. Um, additionally, with so many people interested in participating in the process and wishing to present input, it will be important for everyone to keep their comments brief. And because we looked at the list and how many people who wish to speak today, we have to limit everyone to two and a half minutes. I know I apologize. That, that was different from the last workshop, but there were a much lower turnout. So we will wait until you have completed your presentation before asking for any clarification or questions that we, so that we do not cut into your allotted time. If you have already submitted your comments to the Bureau and have new input today, you may wish to concentrate on the new input. If you have brought your comments in a letter to present to the Bureau today, please note the copies will be posted to the Bureau's website, regulation website, as will any other written comments already submitted or that will be submitted in the future during this process. With the volume of other comments uh, likely to be received, it's simply not economically feasible or environmentally friendly to distribute um, copies in um, hard copy form. So as you may know, the regulatory process can be lengthy. However, that in part is due to ensure that all stakeholders have um, a voice in the process. We want to be able to um, hear your concerns and your opinions. And the Bureau is committed to ensuring the regulatory process is followed and ensuring that all stakeholders are heard. So as a reminder that this is just a workshop. So we're in the informal stages of the regulatory process and we will continue with the informal process until such time we are comfortable that we have received, reviewed, and analyzed all of your input. We also strongly encourage you to provide any suggested language for draft regulations um, during this informal process. The ultimate goal of these workshops is to develop a regulation change which provides clarity to the existing statutory provisions for licensees and direction on how to incorporate this in game rules with the statutory framework in mind. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Suzanne George, who is our moderator for today's workshop. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Suzanne George. I am the Regulations Coordinator for the Bureau of Gambling Control. In addition to Director Shimazu, with me today are Yolanda Morrow, Assistant Director for the Bureau's Licensing Division, Nate Davali, Assistant Director of Compliance and Enforcement, Tyler Burtis, Special Agent in Charge of our Compliance and Enforcement Section of the Southern California Region, and Deputy Attorney General, General Jim Wayan with the Indian and Gaming Law Section for the Attorney General's Office. And just another reminder, there are some additional seats here in the front and then scattered throughout. We encourage you to um, make yourself comfortable. It is approximately uh, 9.09 on Wednesday, November the 14th, and the Bureau of Gambling Control has scheduled this regulations workshop at the Hyatt Regency located at 6225 West Century Boulevard in Los Angeles, California. This workshop is scheduled to discuss the issue of rotation of the player-dealer position. Notice of this workshop has previously been published to the Bureau's webpage, sent by email and mail to interested parties. And a few housekeeping items. If you have not had an opportunity prior to now to sign in to present comments or speak today, 
Um, the white sign-in sheets are at the sign-in table at the back. Please take a moment to do that. Or if you would like to be on the Bureau's uh, distribution list, please sign in on the pink sheets. While no one will be excluded from, particip from participation in these proceedings for failure to identify oneself on the sign-in sheet, the sign-in sheet is being used to call persons who wish to present in the order of sign-in. Secondly, well, I already covered that. If you provide your email or mailing address, we will include you in our distribution list for future meeting notices. This entire workshop discussion is being recorded. In the interest of time, the Bureau will limit speakers to two and a half minutes, and comments must be limited to the issue of the rotation of the player dealer position as noticed for this workshop. Other issues or other regulations will not be covered topics in this workshop. Um, when your name is called, please um, come to this podium here in the front. Uh, you will be asked to state and spell your name and identify the organization you represent. On another note, uh, pl please note that, in that the restrooms are located just outside these doors and to your right, and there are other restrooms behind the elevators. Today's workshop is scheduled for a total of three hours. We may um, be able to work in a short break. We're just not quite sure, depending on the, how their comments are going. Now for an introduction of the topic. In 1984, the California Constitution was amended with a voter initiative, Proposition 37, at the November 6, 1984 general election. Prop 37, also known as the California State Lottery Act of 1984, added provisions of government code and amended the California Constitution, authorizing the establishment of a statewide lottery in California. Proposition 37 also added a prohibition in California of gambling casinos the type that exist in Nevada and New Jersey. Specific to this prohibition, Proposition 37 added Section 19E to the uh, Constitution, which reads, the legislature has no power to authorize and shall prohibit casinos of the type currently operating in Nevada and New Jersey. Until this proposition was enacted, casino gambling was prohibited within California by statute, not by Constitution. Chapter 10 of the California Penal Code contains code uh, sections specific to gambling, sections 330 through 337Z. Penal Code Section 330, first enacted in 1872, prohibited six specifically named games or any banking game played with cards, dice, or any other device for money, check, credit, or any other representative of value. This section was amended four times since 1872, extending the list of specifically named games and changing the penalty and sentencing structure. You are welcome to uh, read that section. It's Penal Code Section 330. In, in 2000, Section 330.11 was added to the California Penal Code. In 2001, Section 330.11 was amended by Assembly Bill 54. Penal Code Section 330.11 provides banking game or banked game does not include a controlled game if published rules of the game feature a player dealer position and provide that this position must be continuously and systematically rotated amongst each of the participants during the play of the game. Ensure that the player dealer is able to win or lose only a fixed and limited wager during the play of the game and preclude the house, another entity, a player, or an observer from maintaining or operating as a bank during the course of the game. For purposes of this section, it is not the intent of the legislature to mandate acceptance of the deal by every player if the division finds that the rules of the game render the maintenance of or operation of a bank impossible by other means. The house shall not occupy the player dealer position. There is not, however, any text within the California Constitution or the statutes of California that define what constitutes continuously and systematic rotation of the player-dealer position. The California Gambling Control Act and Business and Professions Code Section 19826, Subdivision G, assigns the Department of Justice the responsibility of approving the play of any controlled game in gambling establishments within California, including placing restrictions and limitations on how a controlled game may be played. 
The California Gambling Control Act also mandates the adoption of regulations which provide for the approval of the game of game rules by the Bureau to ensure fairness to the public and compliance with state laws. The topic of the rotation of the player dealer position is now open for public discussion. All right, the first speaker um, on our list today is the mayor of Inglewood, James Butts. And before you start, sir, I will give you a 30 second warning when you get close. How much time do I have? You have two minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. Anyway, my name is James Butts. I'm here um, representing the city of Inglewood, but equally important, the 800 employees of uh, Hollywood Park Casino, 120 of them are, are Inglewood residents. And I'm here to talk about the rotation of the player dealer position. This game represents $1.3 million in revenues to the city of Inglewood. To change it unilaterally, as you discuss, will make it less desirable. 1.3 million is 10 police officer positions in the city of Inglewood. We project a $50,000 surplus for this coming fiscal year. This would immediately blow a $1.25 million deficit in our, in our budget. We have come from an $18 million deficit in 2011 to a surplus this year. Uh, just like all cities, like all cities, we have the unfunded liabilities for PERS to consider. There are so many things that have been changed in the city of Inglewood, and this game has been played with us for 20 years in just this manner. I have 37 years in law enforcement. Four of those years, I was a vice narcotics lieutenant in charge of vice narcotics. We have never had a problem with the casino. We have never had a problem with this game. And so to unilaterally, unilaterally change this game so it becomes less desirable for people to come needlessly endangers employment for our residents, needlessly endangers the budget of the city of Inglewood, and it seems to be a solution in search of a problem. I urge you on behalf of our employees at Hollywood Park, Park Casino, I urge you on behalf of all these employees to not change this regulation. I have 600 letters from our employee and I, employees uh, at the casino. I would like to know who to leave them with so that we could uh, have our voices heard. It is so important that in this day and age, we have, we have cut the unemployment rate in Inglewood from 17.5% in 2011 to 4.8% right now. A good chunk of that is the employment that has been provided by the Hollywood Park Casino. I urge you again to think past regulation and think about people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Vanessa Delgado. All right. Thank you so much. Hugo Argumento. My apologies if I pronounced your, wrong, your name incorrectly. No, I actually did uh, quite well. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to address you this morning. Uh, and I, too, am the uh, mayor of the city of, uh, of Commerce. And uh, we represent uh, many of our employees at the Commerce Casino. We represent the residents of the city of Commerce. And uh, our impacts, uh, as stated by the uh, mayor from the city of Inglewood, uh, just our numbers are different, but many of the same points that he just made uh, apply to us as well. I'm here representing all these uh, individuals here. Uh, the impact potentially to our budget is $16 million. Uh, at our previous visit that we had with you in Sacramento, we highlighted and presented uh, some of the information to you. Uh, our casino employs uh, over 2,500 employees uh, in, in the City of Commerce, and so the impacts to our community are significant. Uh, our city would have no choice but to begin to lay off many of our employees in our city. Uh, we would have to probably, the casino in itself would also have to probably reduce its uh, employment uh, as well. 
So uh, again, uh, we're here. The Commerce Casino has been a partner in our community for many, many years. A, a, and I do consider them to be a significant partner in our community. They've contributed to many of our scholarship programs, our senior programs. Uh, anything we've asked uh, where we've needed help, we've gone to them and they've been able to provide the help and assistance that we need. So uh, what we're here urging you and imploring you to uh, reconsider uh, any changes to the uh, proposed uh, regulation. The impacts are too great to not only the City of Commerce but the surrounding cities and uh, I think you're going to hear some of the individual stories, some of the success stories. I know from our city you'll be hearing from some of our uh, members of our community and some of the Commerce employees and uh, I want you to take that back and hopefully you'll take those items into consideration for they absolutely will have a detrimental impact to our community and the surrounding communities. And I would like to enter into uh, the record. Uh, I brought also signatures that were collected by uh, many of uh, the members in our community and I want you to take this. Over 724 signatures that were received, petitions, imploring you to uh, take them into consideration as you move forward in this process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, Myra Maravilla. Good morning. My name is Myra Maravilla, and I am the City of Hawaiian Gardens Councilwoman. As a leader in my community, I am most disappointed in the harsh, unwarranted treatment of the driving economic engine in our city and Southeast LA region. I have a message for General, Attorney General Becerra and the Bureau of Gaming Control. What did we do to deserve you picking on low income immigrant communities that primarily rely on our casino revenue? This is a direct assault on our working families, our seniors and our youth. I am here to represent my community Again, Sacramento politicians that have no concept of how these gaming regulations affect real, hardworking people. Growing up, I did not have the privilege of using our local parks due to gangs, drugs, and violence. As a young child, I remember a gangster was shot and killed in front of my home. However, thanks to our casino, we have been able to fund increased police, and fire services, leading to no murders in the last two years in the city of Hawaiian Gardens. According to SCAG, only 12.5% of Hawaiian Gardens residents have a bachelor's or higher. The new city council incoming December 11th will have three millennials holding master's degrees. This is a direct result of the success our casino has brought to our community. You, the Bureau of Gaming Control, are charged with consumer protection, market balance, and anti-corruption. You need to do your job, and let us continue to work with our Hawaiian Gardens Casino to continue the progress in our community. 76% of our revenue comes from the casino, and we would lose the ability to continue as a viable city in the Southeast LA region. I ask that you join our community and the communities present here today in supporting our economic engines to maintain ourselves as cities. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Jesse Alvarado. Good morning, my name is Jesse Alvarado, resident of the city of Hawaiian Gardens. The, the new state regulation will have a big time financial impact in our community. Our city is one square mile. 76% of the revenue comes from the casino. We have great youth programs. By losing 50% of the revenue, we'll lose many programs that affect our youth, our senior programs, 
in a, and also the gang intervention program. So I really urge you to not to adopt the program. The, uh, the new state regulations have a big impact on our community, and I think it's not fair for our community as a whole, our kids, our future, and, and the whole community as a whole. Thank you. Have, have a good day. Thank you. I'm sorry, one moment, please. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we are at capacity. If there are plenty of seats that are not filled, I ask you now to take this time to please, if you have a seat next to you, raise your hand. Ladies and gentlemen, quickly fill in these seats um, because unfortunately we do not have an overflow room and we do have to abide by fire marshal code. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate that you're due uh, move quickly and as quietly as possible. Our next speaker is going to be Senator Stephen Bradford. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity to come before you. My name is Steve Bradford, and I'm the Senator of the 35th Senate District, and I represent four card rooms in the city. I grew up in the city of Gardena that has been the hub of cart rooms probably for over 80 years in the state of California, and we survived because of those, that, that industry. I represent the city of Inglewood, as the mayor clearly stated, that means $6 million to, the bottom, to their revenue and their bottom line. To the city of Gardena, it means $8 million. It, it means an impact on parks and recreation uh, departments, our public safety, all the city services that are vitally important, and I also represent Crystal Park Casino in the city of Compton. So those are four institutions that employ thousands of people within the region and provides tremendous revenue to these cities. I also s serve on uh, uh, government or organizations uh, committee in the state legislature, both in assembly and in uh, the Senate. And we have worked tirelessly to come to a partnership that doesn't impact Native American gaming as well as respect what has been existing in these local communities for, like I say, in some communities as long as 80 years. This is important revenue to the city. It's important jobs to the cities. And we have been un under the understanding we could play games of skill. Blackjack is a game of skill. We have no games of chance such as slots. So in order to, to stay competitive, this rotation of dealer will be a clear disruption to the game. Uh, we'll lose the continuity. I've talked to uh, many players who say, I will not play if I have to get up every 10 minutes. They want continuity in the game. Nobody, not even want, anyone playing a slot machine wants to get up every 10 minutes and change machines. So continuity of play is vitally important. This rotation will disrupt uh, not only the continuity of the uh, play, but also the revenue and jobs in our community. So we respectfully ask you to really consider this, uh, and we will be looking at this, at, at, as I stated, in the California legislature this year to see how we can continue to work, because these games have existed for 20 years without any disruption, so why now? So thank you. Thank you. Hank Trimble. Good morning and thank you for this opportunity to speak against the rotation. You've heard from my fellow council member and a resident of Hawaiian Gardens. It is 70% of our revenue and any rotation change would devastate our community. They spoke about gangs and they spoke about different things. Well, I was born there in 1956. I seen the change of that city. It has gotten so much better. We went from considered a welfare city. Since we got this casino, now we're a giving city. 
We're not a selfish city. We give to schools, we give to nonprofits, we do so much. And it's affecting our residents to see the children seeing leadership give so freely because we have money coming in. And it's devastating to grow up like I did with hardly nothing. It, 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 it affects you as a person. Um, I grew out of that. I agree with my colleagues, everyone here speaking, but I'll tell you one thing about Hawaiian Gardens. Now it is a giving city. We give to our residents, we give to nonprofits, we give to schools, and I'd hate to see that end. So please reconsider your, or just throw this into the makings. I know it's a plan, and I just hope that and pray that you guys would take our city under consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tasha Serta. Good evening, I'm sorry, good morning. Uh, my name is Tasha Serta and I'm the mayor of the city of Gardena. And I'm here because in the city of Gardena we have two card rooms. We have LD and The Hustler. And they've both been very good employers, offering very good paying long-term jobs for our residents. The jobs that the casino offers are very unique in the fact that they do not require college or work experience. In fact, many of the jobs, they pay very well so that residents in our community can take care of their families and have a very decent income so that they can purchase homes within the community. In addition, our city would, um, I'm sorry, they greatly rely on the tax revenues from both casinos and the fact that just last year, the tax revenues were $8 million, which is about 14% of our budget. And this pays for our police and our fire department. And as our assembly member stated earlier, the other casinos have slot machines. And, you know, it's, you know, we have blackjack there, so we need to have some leverage in there. So I hope you will take all of this into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Evangelina Romero. Good morning, Honorable Gambling Committee. My name is Evangelina Romero, and I've been part of Hawaiian Gardens community for eight years. Also, I'm currently Miss Hawaiian Gardens. As a city resident of this great neighborhood, I have benefited tremendously from various programs that are threatened to get cut, such as the youth sport program, the nutritional program, numerous excursions, the youth employment program, and most importantly, the scholarship program. The scholarship program is funded by the casino revenue that in turn funds the money that pays for hundreds of tuitions. This scholarship helps me invest in my much needed education so I can so I can prosper into a successful member of society. Without the aid of the casino, 90% of my tuition and many others will be lost and forgotten. Moreover, a paramount program that will be taken away from our small community will be the Youth Employment Program, which aids 14 to 24 year olds to find employment within the city and the county. As a participant of this program, I was able to find a position within the city to the, with the city's engineer department. But with as much as 80% of the funds being affected, my newly hired position will be in jeopardy. Nevertheless, and equally as important, will be our public safety department, an alternative to gang membership program that ensures that our youth does not fall back to gang activity. Also, they help me and the other 14,449 residents in our city to feel safe to walk down the streets at any given time of day. And I can assure you, it was not like this eight years ago. As an ambassador of this loving and giving city, it would be a disservice if I would not share our community stories. I'm a reflection of hundreds of young adults that live in our city. Ultimately, I highly encourage you and urge you to reconsider the proposed regulations on the casinos, as it will have a negative impact on the economic structure of Hawaiian Gardens. 
Many businesses, residents, families, and school will be in dire need of the funds. And as a result, many family households will have to retrograde to inadequate ways of living. So please reconsider this action and help my community to keep on prospering into an exemplary city that we can all be proud to call home. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Scott Fairfield. Scott Fairfield. Good morning. I'm the current chief of police of the city of Bell Gardens. Should this initiative pass, it'll be yet another decision made in Sacramento that affects the residents of our city in an unfortunate and unfair way. With the early release programs and some of the other issues that are happening in our communities, the mental health, funding, any significant loss of funding to the casino will impact public safety in our city immensely. I ask that you take into consideration the individuals who live in small communities like ours that count on this, this money and this tax resource to survive in a community that has been growing and growing over the years, uh, largely because of the impact of our casino. So once again, I ask that you seriously consider the individuals that you see here and the individuals that don't have a voice today. Uh, I've seen firsthand what happens. Um, we're already shorthanded in law enforcement in our community, and another loss would uh, be huge. So. Please take that into consideration, and thank you for the time today. Thank you. Mark Henderson, Council Member Mark Henderson. And ladies and gentlemen, I understand your enthusiasm, but um, in order for, to protect the time that speakers have, please let's keep our applause at a minimum. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's thank okay. you. Uh, good morning, Commission. Uh, my name is Councilman Mark Henderson, representing the City of Gardena. Uh, as stated by our, our senator, former councilman of City of Gardena, as well as current mayor of City of Gardena, uh, Gardena is fortunate enough to have the courtesy of being in partnership with two card clubs, the Hustler Casino as well as the Lucky Lady. And with the, the, the quantitative numbers in regards to if this initiative were to move forward, the impact on our general fund is a loss of $1.36 in revenue. So that's, that's the hard numbers, but let's talk about the qualitative issues and what it means to our community. What it means to our community, it has a negative, grossly negative impact on our public safety, on the training of our police officers, on our diversionary programs, on our youth programs, on our senior programs. These are the things that we actually pride ourselves in, in our community of 62,000 people. We rely on this revenue to make sure that our community is burgeoning, we're moving forward, and this would have a negative, an extremely and grossly negative impact on us. So we are urging you to please reconsider or take all this feedback into account in consideration of your decision. And think about the folks behind the decisions that we are making. Us as elected leaders, we always talk about the numbers and the budget, but we also have to focus on the people and what these dollars mean to the people. So our youth, our seniors, our public safety, our training, our parks maintenance, our facilities maintenance, all the things that help make a community what it is to support the people. I thank you for your time this morning. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Ralph Franklin. City Manager Jose Polio. Polito. Uh, Pedro Acetuno. Good morning. Good morning. Council member Pedro Acetuno, Thank representing you. the city of Bell Gardens. And I'm also here on behalf of the California Cities for Self-Reliance Joint Powers Authority, which is a number of cities in LA County that have card casinos, chairperson. You've heard a lot this morning on the impacts and I'm gonna come here today before you and tell you a story of what the casino did 
to an individual like myself. Uh, when I was about 12 years old, we had a, uh, a little league uh, uh, baseball. And we always remembered that our younger siblings or our friends were going to utilize an old uniform, recycled uniforms, what we used to uh, say when we were growing up. That year was the year that the casino, the bicycle casino, came into Bell Gardens. They gave us brand new uniforms. And I still remember hearing the dollar amount of each of those uniforms, $70 back then, talking about 33 years back. We lost our first game because we didn't want to slide. We didn't want to rip that uniform. <laughs> We knew that this was, these were the uniforms that our siblings and our friends will be using the following year because that's what our mentality was. Needless to say, uh, it was a two-game elimination. We won our next game. We eventually lost our uh, fourth game or so. And the team that beat us, I still remember, eight to six, was the team that we felt that we could have beat, but for not sliding, and not wanting to rip those uniforms, we chose not to. Today, you've heard stories on how the casinos give back. They give in many ways. They give back to kids nowadays that have an opportunity to go to higher education. In many cases, first in their families. So reconsider what you may do, uh, make sure we keep our casinos in business. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Hank Trimble. Hank Trimble. I spoke already. You signed in twice? No. I did not say twice. Just teasing. But we might have room at the end. All right. So, Devon Kumar. Ernie Crespo. Abel Avalos. Good morning. My name is Abel Avalos, and I'm the Community Development Director for the City of Bell Gardens. The proposed regulation change is quite frankly baffling. I haven't heard any good public policy or legal reasoning as to why this is even being considered. This is nothing more than a thinly veiled attempt by Indian gaming and outside special interests to kill urban casinos and as a result, devastate the communities in which they operate. Look around you. This room isn't filled by outside special interests. It's filled with people that live and work in our communities. And I can tell you as a person who grew up in Bell Gardens, back in the early 80s, mid 80s, when the concept of a casino in Bell Gardens was being proposed, I can tell you that there was a lot of fear mongering about what that would do to our communities. That it would bring crime, that it would take away valuable resources from um, uh, police and fire, parks and recs, would be non-existent and it would just be rampant with drug abuse and prostitution. I can tell you as a person who grew up in that community and who now works to improve that community, that couldn't be further from the truth. And you know it. The reality is, is that the casinos are the lifeblood of some of these communities. Now all of you here on the dais, you each live in a community that was in some way affected by the loss of redevelopment just five years ago. Big or small, every city was impacted. Ours more than others. Hawaiian Gardens, Bell Gardens, Gardena. We were all affected negatively by that. Now, on top of that, you're considering some regulation changes that will potentially take away 40% of our current general fund. Think about that a moment. Think about your communities. What that would mean to your communities if tomorrow 40% of the city's general fund was cut. Where do you think those cuts are going to come from? Okay. What I'm asking you today is to consider this not 
as your formal positions, but put yourself in the shoes of the people that are here and what that means to their communities. Okay, it could be devastating. And I can tell you the irony is that 40 years ago, all that talk about all the negative stuff that would happen hasn't materialized. But you today could potentially make that happen if you vote to keep these regulations that you're proposing, to impose those regulations. Thank you very much. So please think about that. Thank you. <laughs> Edgar Cisneros. Bureau, good morning. Good morning. Don't want to be repetitive, but my name is Edgar Cisneros, City Administrator for the City of Commerce. I want to echo all the comments that you've heard before you this morning, all comments from individuals that are very concerned with the serious task ahead of you. Hopefully you'll take those into account. For the City of Commerce, I want to underscore what our mayor said, but again, not be repetitive. It would have a severe impact on our city budget. We have dozens of residents here, dozens of employees that they, they're concerned. They're, con they're concerned about their jobs and they're concerned because they love to provide services for the community members that are here today. And the actions that you take and the decisions that you make will impact our community and many communities uh, throughout LA County. I wanna respectfully urge the Bureau to consider having another Los Angeles hearing because as you can see, this one's at capacity and people have been deprived of the opportunity to participate. I would also like to request that you hold it in the evening or on the weekend because we do have members of the community that work. So please allow folks the opportunity to participate. You also have players that rely on these games the way that they are for entertainment. And hopefully you'll make this hearing or the next hearing more central to them so that they can also participate and share their feedback. Greatly appreciate you for holding this hearing and hopefully uh, all these comments are being taken into account. Thank you very much on behalf of the City of Commerce. Thank you. Ileana Arasiga. Good morning. My name is Ileana Arechiga. I am a longtime resident of Hawaiian Gardens. Growing up in Hawaiian Gardens, I have seen the positive impact that the casino has brought in. Thousands of jobs, great quality of life for the residents, lower crime stats, amazing opportunities for its residents in programming for seniors, our youth, even toddlers. Our youth is our future is our city motto. We truly believe that and we live it day by day. Currently, the city offers a wide range of scholarships and job opportunities, such as computer labs, sports, dance, programming, senior nutrition, homework assistance. We truly believe that our parks make life better. Without the casino revenue, none of this would be possible. I strongly urge you to reconsider implementing your new casino regulations. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yvette Avina. Hello. Hello, my name is Yvette Avina, and I'm here to speak to you as a resident of Hawaiian Gardens. I have lived in this small city with a big heart for 30 years. And let me just state that the big heart has not always been there. In fact, at one point, our neighborhood was infested with gangs, crime, and drugs. And growing up, this meant that it was just a matter of time before you were consumed in that toxic lifestyle. To be honest, if it were not for the city programs, I would have become another statistic by either becoming a teen mom or a high school dropout, just like my sisters. Two of my three sisters became teen moms. One never graduated high school, two suffered with drug addictions, and one has been to prison three times. And the only difference between my siblings and myself is that I was fortunate enough to find refuge within the city programs at a very young age. I participated in the Boys and Girls Club, played on various city sports teams, and was a regular at the local teen center. The staff taught me good work ethic and responsibility, and they exposed me to what life could be with a proper education. 
Because of these programs, I defeated all the statistics, statistics that come with being a Latina from a low-income community. Meaning, no, I did not become a teen mom. No, I did not get into drugs. I know I do not receive public assistance. In fact, I am proud to say that I am part of the 1% of Latinas that hold a master's degree. <clears throat> now that I am a bit older and have a nine-month-old daughter at home, I want to assure that she too has the same opportunities as I did. However, that may not be the case if you decide to approve the proposed casino regulations. If approved, the, re the redu reduction in revenues will lead to a decrease in law enforcement and elimination of all recreational programs, which in turn will lead to a bigger gang presence and higher crime rate, something I worked so hard to keep my daughter from. I urge you to take into consideration the negative impact these regulations can potentially have on a community that heavily relies on casino revenue. Not only are you jeopardizing the quality of life for my daughter and other residents, but you're also risking the livelihoods of the many em city employees and their families. Thank you for your time. Artie Fields. Ed Medrano. Good morning, I'm Ed Medrano and I'm representing the city of Gardena. I am the, currently the city manager of the city of Gardena. I know you have heard testimony from many individuals about the financial impacts to the communities uh, as a result of the proposed changes. I want to tell you that in many of these communities, gaming has been part of the fabric of these communities for a long time. In Gardena since the 50s. Arguably, we were one of the first communities in California to start gaming. And as a result, we have relied on this funding for many, many, many years. So when you talk about having a shift that substantially will impact our finance, it, it's difficult. Just last year, we had to reduce our funding from the casinos by $2 million. The impact of this will cause approximately another $2 million. It's hard to say what rotation will do because it's um, almost impossible to quantify how, how much of an impact, but we estimate at least $2 million from this. Not to mention what the proposed changes to black li blackjack-like games could have. What does this do for us? It impacts a lot of services. And these are services that come right out of our general fund. Most importantly, in a city like Gardena, those service cuts are gonna come from public safety because they're the most important and they are actually the most expensive, no surprise to any, anyone else in this room. And as a result of that, we are gonna have to make tough, tough decisions and those tough decisions are people and services. So I've had the opportunity to be a city uh, manager for a short period of time, but most of my career has been as a police officer and the chief for over 11 years. I was president of the LA County Police Chiefs and the California Police Chiefs Association. And throughout my history, I have seen when times like this come up with regulations that will have negative impacts on uh, communities in terms of revenue, the chiefs get concerned. Because once again, they know they have the largest budgets and they're being asked to do more with less constantly. We understand the regulations need to be reviewed, but I want you to really consider those direct impacts to public safety. At a time we're dealing with homeless, mentally ill, active shooter, natural disasters, release, uh, early release of prisoners, there's a lot of pressures on communities to enhance services, not cut services. So as you consider these uh, changes, please consider the impacts, not only to sit the cities, but all of the employees who work for these casinos who mainly live in our communities and are you know, productive citizens. So thank you and I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Mark Collegian. Christian Hernandez. Uh, Mark Collegian was the first one. No. And Christian Hernandez. Going once. All right, Cecil Rambo. Good morning. Uh, my name is Cecil Rambo. I'm the city manager in the city of Compton. 
Uh, and just like uh, City Manager Medrano, I spent a great deal of my career in law enforcement um, and uh, been a city manager a short period of time the last four years in Compton here. One of the things I will echo uh, on behalf of my mayor and council as well as the 98,000 residents in the city of Compton is uh, we partner with our casino and our card room, The Crystal, and uh, this impacts people, it impacts jobs, it impacts livelihoods. Uh, right now we have fire personnel deployed in Malibu uh, and across the state at these devastating wildfires. Uh, this means $2 million in revenue for the city of Compton. Uh, any impact to our gaming room affects uh, people, jobs in the community. Um, so with that, uh, I uh, understand your position, um, but I have to support our folks, and I hope that you support the community in Compton also. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Joseph Cruz. Harjinder Singh. Clinto Osori. Sylvia Gooden. Good morning, my name is Sylvia Gooden. I've lived in the city of Hawaiian Gardens for 50 plus years. I also work for the city of Hawaiian Gardens as a community outreach liaison. And first of all, I wanted to say uh, approval on this regulation will not only affect Hawaiian Gardens, but other local communities in the states. 66 communities, 23,000 local jobs, 800 million annual income for California, and other communities, two billion annual economic activity, and 300 million federal, state, local tax revenue. Those services include youth services, senior services, public safety, food, and excursion programs that support our low-income seniors, which numbers are in the hundreds. We are a good city and are not so financially wealthy city with most of our population falling under or just above the poverty level, what we have been able to provide with the financial support of the Garden Casino is without question life-saving. Our gang membership in the city has been impacted and has decreased by offering alternatives to our youth, including sports, law enforcement, programming, mental counseling, youth events, clean slate laser tattoo removal, community empowerment programs. Lives have changed many of our youth and adults have decided to steer away from violence and gangs and have decided to remove gang related tattoos through the support of the city of our programs. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Luis uh, Polanco. Hello, my name is Luis, and I came here today to voice my frustration and fear at the proposed sanctions that you are trying to put on the casinos. These sanctions threatened to destroy our beautiful city and set us back 20 years. I lived in the Hawaiian Gardens before the casino and saw and witnessed firsthand uh, what our community is like with lack of funding programs for adults, youth, children, and seniors. Uh, it's a very scary thing because I grew up in this community. I grew up in these programs. They helped me go get through school and Actually, I make a living through the city. I'm an employee as well. 
your sanctions, the only thing I see that they propose is adding to the un unemployment, really, because that's all you hear is loss, loss of jobs, loss of jobs. Um, so I beg you to not cut these or do these sanctions that would, ben that would not benefit our city. Our city's too small and we lack funding other than the casino. It would destroy our community. And like I said, it, it just jeopardizes many lives in our community. And I beg you not to go through this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rose Komasar? Rose Komasar? Ernie Villegas? Mm, no. Ernie V I L L E G A S with Oxnard. I, I think that's me. Okay. My apologies, but he asked. That's, that's okay. <laughs> Um, I work for El Concilio, which is an organization in, uh, in Ventura County. And so uh, on behalf of our El Concilio, uh, I'd like to go ahead and just read a statement from them. Um, on behalf of the board of directors and the entire staff of El Concilio Services, we would like to inform you of the generous support our agency has received from our local card room facility, the Players Casino. Since their entrance in our community, we have received financial support, which has allowed us to support El Concilio's various quality of life programs for our low income, underserved Latino population. These services included Youth for Success, a multifaceted youth leadership and development program for at risk youth, Citizen Program, which has assisted over 8,000 permanent residents to become citizens with a community-based approach to naturalization, and direct assistance program, bilingual bicultural direct one-on-one -on -one information and referral assistance. Uh, we are a nonprofit community-based organization founded in 1975, and our mission is to provide direct services and educate programs to the Latino communities. We can fulfill our mission because of the support we receive from committed corporate citizens and individual donors, such as the Players Casino. They have been a committed, uh, a committed corporate citizen and a great partner for El Concilio Family Services. Their contribution has allowed us to forward our mission in our community, and that's very impactful because uh, the, the entire staff, the entire organization, really has taken a leadership role in Ventura County uh, to make our programs as successful as we can. We really count on that kind of leadership. The actions being considered by the Bureau of Gambling Controls would have a direct and negative impact to our community. For decades, the card room have contributed steady tax revenues, well-paying jobs, and capital improvement. In closing, as the Bureau of Gambling Control considers actions that will significantly harm the revenues of card rooms, we encourage you to recognize the positive impact of card rooms, uh, what they've had in our communities, as you can see throughout here with, with people testifying. We're very concerned about the lack of public process of such a drastic action, and we really appreciate you having these hearings. So we're thankful and support and looking forward to a long-term relationship with Players Casino. Thank you. And Thank did you, you want to leave that letter with us? I'm sorry? Did you want to leave that letter with letter. us? Sure. Thank you. Jesse Alvarado. Unless there's another. Okay. Evelyn Dias. Hello. Hello. It's Evelyn Diaz. Oh, thank you. So, good morning. My name is Evelyn Diaz, and I'm here in support of the Commerce Casino. I'm a resident of the City of Commerce, the Literacy Program Manager for the City of Commerce Public Library, and the Treasurer for the City of Commerce Employee Association of ASME Local 773. Because of the various roles and development through the city, I self-identify as a, work, a walking product of the City of Commerce. 
I lived in the city for 30 years and have participated in most, if not all, of the programs offered through the city and, in turn, financial support of the Commerce Casino. One of the programs that has had the greatest effect on me is the Commerce Scholarship, which the casino generally, generously donates $50,000 on an annual basis. Because of the scholarship, I stand before you with a bachelor's degree in sociology and Chicano Latino studies and a master's degree in school counseling, both from Long Beach State. And currently, as a doctoral student in educational leadership at UCLA. As a recipient of the scholarship and now manager of the program, I can personally attest to the positive impact it's had on my life and the students that have received the scholarship. Through the casino support education of the means of, through the means of donation, since its early stages of the scholarship in 1983, the Commerce Casino has donated over a million dollars and has helped over 2,000 students pursue their college education by easing the financial hardship pursuing an education has. It's helped students see college as a viable option. Last year alone, we provided 72 scholarships. Let me repeat that because it should resonate in you. Because of the annual $50,000 donation from the Commerce Casino, we have provided 72 scholarships for students to pursue their college education last year alone. The Commerce Casino consistently invests in their community, and I hope you allow them to continue to do so. As a bureau, you have a responsibility consider to consider the rippling effects this change will have on the communities the casinos operate in. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Hunt with the City of Compton. Andres Herrera with Oxnard. Good morning. My name is Andres Herrera, and I am from Oxnard. Uh, I am also the president of El Consejo Family Services in Oxnard. Uh, our Players Casino is in the city of Ventura, and they can speak for themselves as to how much that casino has helped them and their bottom line to provide services for the city. But I'm speaking on behalf of El Concilio that provides countywide services and that are enhanced by our, uh, our abilities are enhanced by the participation of the Players Casino with their generous contributions to our programs, by volunteering as well in our programs, we've been able to provide tremendous amounts of services within our city and other cities. And all of that will be lost because the Players Casino is involved in the community, not just in the city of Ventura, in which they reside, but they are a model corporate citizen where they participate, not only locally, but as well as throughout the county. And we're very much in support of their continuing operations and our relationship with them uh, to be augmented to make sure we sustain the services we provide for a very underserved community in our city and in our county. Thank you very much. Thank you. Robert Reed. Tom Kang. Vilko Dominic. <clears throat> Renee Bobadilla. Good morning, members of the commission. My name is Renee Bobadilla. I'm the Economic Development Director for the City of Commerce. I'm going to take a page from my uh, Bell Gardens colleague, and not the torn pants uh, page, <laughs> uh, but the page about putting yourself in the shoes as your residents would in your communities. Us losing, the City of Commerce losing uh, revenue from the Commerce Casino would equate to about $16 million of revenue that would be lost. That would devastate our community. It would devastate the residents that partake in the programs that they so, so much deserve. I'm truly heartbroken to see that this 
potential outcome can affect our community in this way. We lost redevelopment in 2012. It completely took away our ability to develop and bring development to our town. So the loss of this revenue is, is paramount for us, and we urge you to really reconsider and think about the impacts that this decision will make to communities like ours, Bell Gardens, Gardena, Compton, and others. Um, we, we pride ourselves in our programs. Uh, you've heard today about the amounts of, of generosity our casinos throughout the state of California give to our communities. Um, ours in particular, uh, scholarships, libraries, uh, and more importantly, public safety. If we lose the $60 million to our community, which is 40% of our entire revenue, we would, we would have to make severe cuts, primarily to our public safety, fire and sheriff. And as our city administrator mentioned, we urge you to please listen to, to our communities. A lot of our residents took days off of work today to attend this meeting. Some of them cannot. Um, because of work issues, if you can please ensure that uh, other meetings can be held in the evening to let our community members come and voice their, their concerns. But the impacts are going to be severe, and uh, we really truly hope that the Commission takes these into consideration and as they make their decisions, really diligently look at how these communities throughout um, the state of California, and particularly Commerce, and how the cities that are here today will be affected. Our residents really truly rely on our, our revenue from casinos. And we so wholeheartedly hope that you take all that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Sammy Forrest with the Hustler Casino. Good morning. My name is Sammy Farrag. Um, I work for Hustler Casino and I'm a card dealer. The regulations you're proposing will affect everyone in this room, all the cities. We are the working poor. We are not the filthy rich. We need our government to give us a hand up, not a kick down. We need our government to work for us. We want you to work for us. We want you to go back and tell the commission that this will affect our mortgages, our kids in college, our car payments, all of our communities. You need to stand up for us, not the special interest. Thank you very much. Safe Haddad with Acme. Safe Haddad. Go ahead. You don't want to talk after all. Okay. <laughs> uh, John Plata with Agua Caliente. Thank you, my name is John Plata with Agua Caliente Band of Cahuilla Indians. Thank you for your time today. I just wanted to let you know that we're gonna rely on our written comments that we submitted on the continuous and systematic rotation requirement. And I want to urge the Bureau of Gambling Control to develop regulations that address the rotation requirement in a way that upholds the California constitutional prohibition against bank games. That's all I have. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. So remember in the beginning Lady. we talked about being um, courteous and collegial, if we can please remember that as we proceed. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate your, cons your consideration and courtesy for all speakers. As Director Shimazu reminded you, 
this is going to be a professional and polite experience for everyone. Thank you. Jamie Valencia. Thank you, Commission. I have a unique perspective in this. I'm a, I lived in the city of Commerce in my life, and I worked at the Commerce Casino in the county department for 25 years. As last night as I'm thinking of putting a financial report together to show the importance of financial gain that, this, that the casino gives to other communities, I decided to get a little personal because, because what happens is I can put a financial report together. The Commerce Casino employs 10,000 people. How do you say 10,000? Working in the county department, we pay out millions of dollars. Our light bill alone is 300,000. Uh, the McDonald's next to us had to do a second, a second uh, drive-through because you know, some employees and also some patrons that come to, to our, our community to visit our casino might stop by in there. The gas station alone, Commerce Casino spends $350 in the gas station alone across the street. But let me get personal. In 1986, I had a motorcycle accident. I used to be a lifeguard and I used to taught life saving. So then what happened was I ended up in a special hospital called Rancho Los Amigos in Downey, California. In that hospital, in that hospital they trained you to come back into, into real life because I'm not the same person I was before and I was trained for something I was not able to do before. So after the five years came along short, I, uh, the, they had a program where they gave me some money to, go to, to buy anything that I would need to, go, to get back into society. So I started applying at different places. I took a circle around my, my home of 20 miles and I applied everywhere. Even though I was more qualified, nobody ever gave me a chance. So then I decided to go next door, where, where, next door um, to the Commerce Casino. They did not discriminate. I originally applied for a position downstairs. So even though I did qualify, they said, you have a little bit more skills where you can put you up in the county department. So I went up to the county department, and then every five years I have a I have a a, um, a interview, an exit interview that the the hospital keeps track of how people in my condition are doing. So then, um, so the first year they told me that you might not be able to work, so you have to really consider knowing that you might go to work and fail. So then, what happened was. Uh, after a year, uh, with well, the first year, they give you money to buy anything you need to go back to work, and they give you full insurance for one year. After the first year, the doctor called me and said, you know, your insurance is going to run out. What are you going to do? You have a pre insistent condition. Keep in mind, this is 1982. Realizing that my casino did not give up, they paid 350000 not just for me, but for all the employees that had a preconditioned condition. And that's the, what's going to affect with this uh, gaming revenue. That's one of the most important things that I want the commission to know. Thank you. Thank you.